Hello and welcome to Georgia Sites Online Beginner Shuttle Tatting Class. Today I want to show you how to do a split chain. Now split chain works the same principle as the split ring. It is used to climb from one round out to another. Okay? And for today's tutorial, what I want to show you, I've got this motif we made previously on another video, and then I just added this little bit right here. Okay? It is no set pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to join a chain to here. Okay? But it's going to be a split chain so we could pop out to another round if we wanted to. Okay? In order to do that, we set our hand up to make a chain. Okay? Now I'm still using the Aunt Lydia's Crochet Cotton size 10 for demonstration. Okay? In the tatalongs, I will be using actual tatting thread. The Elizabeth, it's wonderful thread. Okay? So let's get on with it. Now I do front side, bike side tatting, so that is my habit of go-to, but for right now you just do regular tatting, okay? Because to learn front side, back side, it is a difficult technique to master, but once you master it, you're going to love it, okay? And that will be taught in another video, okay? Right now we're doing a split chain. All right, now I have not counted how many stitches I have. So let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Okay, now what I want to do is I want this ring, this chain to join right here, okay? Because we're working on the back side of our work. It will be joining right here on the front side, okay? So. In order to get that to join right here, and both threads come out here to go into the next round, what I have to do is a lock join, okay, right here. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull that thread through. Okay, you see what I've done? Now, granted, this chain is not long enough for the work that I want to do, but we need room to be able to do our lock join. Now remember, before we lock our stitch in place, we want to open that chain up, okay, make sure everything is where we want it, because once we lock that down, it's locked, okay? Now if you're working with small, small thread, if you lock it down, it's hard to get back in there and correct. Okay, this larger thread, that lock join is a little bit easier to get out, but not real easy. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we've got our lock join in. Okay, we don't need that shuttle anymore. Move it out of the way. We're going to work strictly using this shuttle. All right, and you're going to pull your thread up through the base of that loop run your shuttle through. Okay? Once you do that, pull it forward. Okay? Lay that thread down. Pull that loop back through. Alright? And then walk this over to create the first half of your stitch. Then you're going to go through that loop that's existing to finish that stitch. Okay? There's no flipping. Let's do it again. We're going to do seven of these. Alright? Go up through the loop. You want to make sure that everything lines up side by side before you get into the second half of that stitch. Alright, so you take this half of your thread, walk it over, run your shuttle down through the existing loop, finish that stitch. Okay, do it again. You want seven. 
And I'm doing this really, really slow so you can see what I'm doing. Pull that loop up. You see? Run our shuttle through it. Okay, you're working back towards that dark purple thread. After you pull your loop back down through, come up there, run your shuttle down through that. Okay. Now my stitches aren't as great as they normally are because I'm watching this through a camera viewer. So I can make sure it stays in shot for you guys. Now when you pull that up there, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you will make sure your threads are side by side on this loop. See that? Stick your finger in there and run your shuttle up. It helps with getting that stitch in. Okay. Hold that loop open. Run your shuttle up. Bring it down. Okay. Pull it back down into itself. Flip it back through. Okay. Walk it over. Walk that first half of that stitch over. Finish out that stitch. Okay. Now, we've got one, two, three, four. We've got three more to do. Okay. And you're coming up from the bottom on the first half. Pull it down. Pull it back through. Walk that stitch over. Okay. And then you go down on the second half. Okay. Up on the first, down on the second. Okay, let's do it again. We've got two more to go. Pull that thread through. We're going up through the loop. Pull it down some. Work our thread down. Come back up the back. Work that stitch over. Okay. Go down through that loop. This is a little lengthy on the video, but I wanted to be sure you all knew how to do this split chain. Because it does come in handy, especially if you're doing doilies or something that has several rounds to it. It's a lifesaver. I've used it many, many times. Okay, pull it down, back through, up. This is our last stitch. Okay, pull that stitch in, and we drop that shuttle back down through that loop, finish that stitch out, and now we have a split chain that is popped out to the next round. And you can see this is one half, and this is the other half of that chain. Now, if you're doing a split chain, make sure you're using the same thread on your chains, okay? Because it's going to show, as you can see, it will show. Alright, unless you want it that way. Now, that could be a design element, if that's what you want. Alright, but that's how you do it, and normally you would come out with either a split ring or a mock pico and a split ring. Alright? So I hope that helps you understand how to do a split chain. If you have any questions, please comment below. We will get back to you with an answer very quickly. Okay? So until next time, happy tatting. Have a great day, and thank you so much for watching.